Cool, so welcome to the workshop. I'm gonna start with some, it's an introduction slide, just to put you in context. Um, I present myself, my name is, what? Oh, yes, my name is Manuel de la Peña, I'm a software engineer, open source software engineer in Atomic Yard, uh, almost one year and a half, core maintainer of Test Containers Go, uh, writing, writing Go since 2016, but working in open source since 2011. I work in Elastic, in Library, etc. and well, in the past, civil servant jobs in Spain, which is very, well, sometimes boring. Um, okay, sorry, there's a little Test containers. Uh, it's an open source framework. The license is MIT, so you can use it in your projects in whatever language that you, you, you use, but specifically for Go, that provides a, a, a wrapper on top of the Docker APIs. So it, co it comes with API, developer friendly APIs to manage the life cycle of containers. Um, okay, you can find it in Java, Go, .NET, Node.js, Python, Rust, Haskell, Ruby, uh, Elixir. Uh, Clojure also, there are many of them. Why we have these languages, or so many languages? Because we want to create experience, uh, the same experience working in the different languages, so you switch to a team that is working in different languages, uh, you can have test containers and well, create this experience of writing tests very, very uh, productively. It has started with Java, uh, but Go and .NET are the most uh, up, up to the same level of features, and Node.js also is coming, coming with us. The, the, the ones that are in the lower uh, Python, Rust, Haskell, Ruby, et cetera, they are community maintained. The Java, Go, and Node.js are maintained by Atomic Jar, which is the company that pays me. So my kids need to, need to uh, this is this story of feed, having lunch and things like that. Um, who is using test containers? Big companies like Spotify, Netflix, Elastic, Neo4j, a lot of them. Are you working for any of them? No. I think I know Zalando has a lot of people here in Berlin. Zalando. I yes? Using test container there? Well, as I said, oh, sorry. There is a, a bit of lag between I click and there is an open source library, I said, MIT, and the difference with other languages, uh, Java, uh, the, the test containers implementation for other languages, that we directly consume what Docker Force does. So at the moment they release a new version of Docker. The Docker libraries, which is a Go, uh, Go library, Go packages, we can uh, consume it directly. The rest of the projects has to rely on Docker for Java, Docker Java, see Docker Java, Docker.net, etc., which is some libraries that are in between, in between Docker, this library, and then test containers. No, we directly consume the Docker packages, and well, it comes with this API to to to. Um, manage the lifecycle content. This is the URL of the repo, you already have it because it's in instructions. Uh, so it's our first day in the, in the office and we have to maintain a legacy app. This app is in the description of the workshop, it's a rating application which is in a database. Uh, what, what's your name, sorry? What's your name? Switchan. Yes, Switchan. Switchan shared a very good example. I'm using a database, I'm using a message queue, and using a Redis cache, for example, this legacy application contains these services, these dependencies. It's a very simple HTTP endpoints application uh, um, that, that relies on this database, Postgres, uh, cache, Redis, and a streaming queue, which is Red Panda, which is an alternative to Kafka, uh, which is a thing is compliant in terms of APIs to Kafka. And also it's using AWS for Lambdas. Who's working with AWS? Okay, cool. This application has been running in production for a few time. There are four supporting services, as I said. There are two teams because there is a team working with the Lambda, specifically, it's written in Go, and one team is working with the HTTP endpoint, but it has zero tests. So it's your, it's your time to fix the application. Well, to, it works because it's in production. It works, oh. But we don't know. You, see, you look at the code and there are zero tests. Uh, okay, the workshop, the URL, oh no, sorry. So let's go to the workshop. Uh, uh, so are you planning to do it interactively? I'm doing it myself, I will create a branch. So if you get lost at some point, uh, I will push the commits. I will do commit by commit every time we complete an assessment. 
I will push it so you can pull it and continue from there. So I'm gonna start. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Let me share the entire screen instead. Uh, how can we share? It was display not share my screen. I will entire screen, yes. So you can see also the terminal. Cool. So I have a, a terminal. I, I make this bigger. So in the in the in the further rows, please tell me if you see it correctly. Good. Good. No more. Okay. Git. You. Uh, the first. Berlin, and I will get push upstream. Um, no, that's wow. Okay, this branch is devs Berlin in the URL of the repo, which is test containers slash workshop go. So I will push everything up uh, up to there. Uh, I'm open the IDE. I'm gonna make this bigger. So also, uh, let me switch the the theme so you better in white right cool better okay can you read it from behind cool there are there are a lot of seats out right here so you need to move uh, in the front sets let's do it um, okay, the workshop needs make, uh, go uh, in different versions. Uh, you can check the version of Docker. I have Docker installed, but I'm gonna use test containers desktop. It's, it's explained it here. So with test containers desktop, as I said, it comes with some uh, convenient uh, features. For example, here you can see, uh, I don't know if we have a, Pointer? I don't know. Well, it's, it's fine. I can, I can move. Well, thank you, thank you, my man. Um, here you can see that there are. Uh, this is the UI of the application that I mentioned. Test containers. You can switch from run containers locally or run run containers in the cloud. I'm gonna use the cloud because it will everything. The test will run in my machine. The application will run in my machine, but the containers will run in the cloud. Why? Because, for example, in this case, I don't want to consume. Yeah, but unfortunately, it's a screen, so he observes the red thing. Uh, okay. Okay. So my finger will. Mouse. Yes. Here. Yes. Okay. As you can see here, I have two. I have two uh, local container runtimes, which is the embedded runtime that I mentioned at the moment is available for Mac. And it's very, as I said, it's a virtual machine, which is very, is created with a frame, virtualization frame from format. It's very performant. I'm gonna use the cloud, but I use, for example, Docker desktop. I have Docker for Mac here, so I could switch it and it will work very well, very well. I use the cloud so you can, you can see it, uh, how it works. Um, you can access some services. I'm gonna remove here before we start. Postgres, we don't want that, sorry. And we will see it later, uh, how to interact with the application. So the version is Docker for uh, Docker version. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry? Yes. Yes, yes. Like Kirill said, whenever you, you are switching, you, to, to be able to switch co uh, context uh, for an application, you need to use uh, the Docker context that Test Container Desktop creates. Uh, Docker context, well, Docker provides the ability to switch from one context to the other. It starts with one default. So the application creates Docker test con TCD, I think is the name, Test Container Desktop. So here, Docker context list. Uh, 
So you can see that there is one TCD. If you select TCD instead of the other one, autom all the automatic replacement from moving one con from one container from time to the other will be automatically transparent to you. <clears throat> cool. Uh, I'm gonna uh, start the, the download the dependencies. Oh, sorry, because it's so big that I cannot even interact with this. Okay, I'm going to start with the downloading dependencies. It could take, a, well, they already uh, installed in my machine. So, yeah, are you following with it or? Oh, yes, probably for, probably for the for for downloading the, the go dependencies yes okay in the meantime i'm gonna uh Pull the images. As you can see, Docker images is it, connecting to the machine that Test Container Desktop created for me in our cloud. So there are the images. So I'm going to pull them. And it will be very fast because it's not running here. It's running in the cloud. So it's pulling from cloud to cloud. Um, Anybody has problems with the Wi Fi? Sorry, forgive me. Please connect to a network called Spheros. Not everybody has a problem. Mm -hmm. Heroes. And the password is either 01234567890. You have the same password as me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, apologize. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, thank you, thank you. Um, so, as you can see, it's pulling the images. Uh, Redis. Um, what is this? Redis, uh, Postgres, and Red Panda, and it will be downloading the, the other one. So I'm going to put this preview to use the markdown. So let's explore the app. As I said, this is an application uh, written in Go, exposed in an API. We have, this is not following any standard in terms of packages, kind of. But it's not the, the best practices. It's the, the intention is to be educational and so for you to, to learn it. So if you see a lot of uh, or packages that, oh, this is, should be done the other way, We're, this is a public repo, so you can contribute with a pull request. Um, so for example, we have this storage layer, which is a database which talks to, the, to a Postgres uh, instance. So we are use. Uh, PGX as driver. So if we go to the rate, uh, sorry, the tax package and go to the repository, we can see that it's using a new repository where it receives a connection string, which is where the uh, uh, the Postgres instance is running. Uh, we don't know beforehand, and it will create the the repository. And this repository has two operations, which is create uh, a new uh, talk, which which these are the values, UUID, which is a string and title, also a string, plain, very, very easy insert instruction, SQL sentence, and a, a get by UID, uh, which is, no, sorry, mess, uh, exist, three operations, create, check if one exists, and get by UUID, which is running a select, a select, very, very easy. It's using a struct for the talk, which is right here, what is the talk? Repository, sorry. What is the talk? Oh, sorry. Uh, with, I think the, there is some lag that is affecting how it interacts with the UI. Oh, oh and type, sorry. Here, types. Very simple. U ID, UID, and title. Uh, let's continue. We have Redis. Uh, every, this application is, as I said, is storing talks, and for each talk which lives in the database, we are storing ratings. So you want to rate this workshop, you go to the application and, well, give five, please. Um, this, the L ratings will be stored in, in Redis. 
not in the database. If we go to Redis, uh, so the ratings directory, uh, we see the repository, and again, same pattern, it creates a Redis client using the Redis libraries, and again, we need a connection string to connect to Redis, and it checks that it's live, and we are going to add or increment uh, the ratings, and we are gonna retrieve all the, all the ratings for a, for a key. Cool, uh, please interrupt me, you raise your hand if you have any question, so we can just talk around about the code. Uh, for the Red Panda, uh, we are using uh, streaming queue, so every time we submit a rating, we are not directly talking to Redis. We are talking to Red Panda, to, to the queue. So we are gonna send the queue, and when the message, send the message to the queue, and when the message is produced, automatically will be sent to, to, to Redis. So we don't want to, we want to decouple. From, from that. And let me show you the broker thing. It's very simple. It's creating a Kafka client with a toppings, which is ratings. Uh, who's working with Kafka or Streams queue? A few of you. Cool. So it's creating, automatically creating the topics. And create, it's send rating. This send rating receives a callback, which is, well, the rating that I want to produce and a produce callback, which is send this to, Redi to, to, to Redis. So at the moment we produce the message, we execute the callback, and we are done. And we, this is intentional. We are waiting for the message to be produced. It could be, we could be the, directly the couple from the message and fire and forget. But in this case, we are gonna wait for the message because we want to write tests around this um, callback and check that it was sent to Redis correctly. And finally, we want to interact with the cloud layer. The, as I said at the beginning, we have a web, uh, the application is interacting with a Lambda, AWS Lambda. This Lambda is calculating uh, statistics about the ratings. In this case, the average of, very simple, the average, and the total count of, of ratings. Very, very simple. So we have an HTTP client for the Lambda which at the end, the Lambda is exposed as a HTTP endpoint. And we have here um, the, the Lambda client, which is very simple, HTTP client from the standard library. This is the payload that we're gonna send. This is all the ratings that we have. Please give me the, uh, all the analytics around it. And it will respond with this payload. Uh, we send the payload, we receive the, the response, and we return it. Very simple. There is a Lambda that we will, be, we, we will build it in the further steps. There is another team working this Lambda. It's not our team. And finally, the web application is in Gene as a con REST controller. Who is using Gene, HTTP, the net HTTP standard library? Cool. Uh, other frameworks like Fiverr or whatever? Cool. In the end, it doesn't matter. We have a router. We have the HTTP endpoints. So whatever router that you are happy with, the standard library, it's fine. But we have three endpoints. We want to post a rating with this payload. We want to get for all the ratings for a talk using this param query string parameter to retrieve the talk. And in the root endpoint, we are gonna retrieve some metadata. This is just for information uh, to see that everything is wired. The database connection URL, the, the the cache URL, all the, all the URLs that we're gonna pro, uh, provide are gonna be there in a JSON, JSON format. So if we go to the application handlers, we can see the three endpoints. Basically, this first one, the root, is directly returning the metadata, which is very simple string. This is uh, uh, reading for the environment variables at the beginning of the application, so we wired the applications when we deploy it in our cluster, in our compose, etc. There are multiple ways to do this with using configuration, like Viper or whatever uh, you prefer. But just for simplicity, just reading the environment variables and putting them there in the in the struct. So this metadata is uh, returned here in the root, and we have a rating for post, which stroke, which will be the payload that we're gonna send when we are going to add a rating. And this rating is getting, it's checking if the, the database contains the talk, because we could 
send a rate into attack that doesn't exist, it will return an error. Uh, if we and uh, finally we'll talk to Redis to send the the message. Uh, sorry, the client. Uh, we will it will get the client from Redis and it will send the 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 message to the message queue. And finally, it will return uh, a JSON payload with the with the rating. And for the response, when we want to retrieve all the ratings for a talk, exactly the same. We talk to the database to check if it exists. And finally, we we check. Uh, we get all the ratings from from Redis. Cool. And fine. At the end, when, once we have the histogram of uh, ratings, we send this uh, uh, histogram to the lambda. And from the lambda, if the lambda gives us an error, we're gonna not fail, but instead we're gonna just respond the ratings. But if the run, if the lambda is available, it will append the histogram with the uh, with append the, the analytics to the histogram, right? Very here, you can see, right? So we have our application. We are already know. Any doubt about the diagram, the architecture of very, very, very simple. Uh, so we have to run it locally. So I'm gonna start. We have a make file here uh, in the application. Let me close everything but this. Close others. This make file come with uh, a convenient go run. So we're gonna start the application. Make dev. You're gonna run the application. We are we have here the application running in the 80, 80 port. Thank you. You uh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. When do you say that you run the Yes, and there is a struct that is initialized uh, when, the, when the application is a startup here in the internal app. We have a metadata, and we have a metadata struct that reads environment variables at the beginning. So it's a, it's a singleton variable that contains global state. <laughs> How do you set the variable? We haven't said already. It's not there yet. So uh, the application gene starts, but the, de the dependencies are not there. Uh, We're gonna demonstrate it. You read, you read, you know what go what's going to happen. You know it. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm joking. Um, so the application is there, but as, as our friend already suggested, uh, what happened with the dependencies? They are not there. Uh, let me, it is slow. For some reason, it's slow even in my machine when I scroll. So sorry if you see some lag. So if we go to the... Uh, um, here, you can see the metadata. I, I'm going to increase the size. Everything is empty. This is the HTTP endpoint, but it's fine because it's returning the data. And we didn't set any environment variable right there. What happens if we try uh, to retrieve the, this is endpoint is here, is checking all the ratings for a, data, for, a, for a talk from the database. And we see a message. The database is not there. If we check the logs from the application, we, we see a 500 error and a message, a, a, log, mes a log error here, right here that the database is not, is not there. The, the Postgres is not there. So we're gonna fix that. Uh, okay, 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 okay. We're gonna fix that. Next step. We're gonna start in dev mode. We need to start our, our application. When we run make dev, we want to start adding the dependencies that we need. We could go to another terminal and say Docker Compose app, but and that will work, but you have to go out, out to, the, to the terminal and switch context uh, to do that. You can also write code to do that. But in the, the, the idea of test containers is to simplify that experience of integrating with your dependencies. And we want to provide this local dev mode um, in Go. So we have an article uh, about, about that here. So it could be of your interest. So we are going to start uh, doing that. Uh, first, we want the database to be populated. So we are going to uh, copy this SQL. 
Sorry, very, very slow. We're gonna create here in the in the in the main direct sorry. Oh. Mm, test data. And we're gonna create a def dash db SQL file. And next step will be we have this, we will create the database, it will create two records in the in the talks database, and we're gonna create a dev dependencies go file in the internal app. So this dev dependencies, you can call it whatever you want here, but now it's clear. Uh, are you familiar with build tags, right? Whenever you build your Go application, you can instrument the Go tool chain with different build tags. And everything that is covered by a build tag, like this one, will be added to the build at the moment um, is passed in the, in, the, in the command line. So we're gonna, uh, uh, we're gonna copy and I'm gonna explain the code after that. So we're gonna leverage the build tags and the init functions in Go. Uh, do you know how init functions works? Yes, every it's executed at the beginning of the application. It's not deterministic, the order that they happen, uh, and you can have multiple of, of them. So let's see what's going on here. So this file will be added to the compilation or to the run, the execution of, of Go, uh, at the moment we pass the dev build tag, right? So uh, we are gonna, uh, adding this build tag to the file, we'll protect it to that. There is a unit function that will start the runtime dependencies. Let's see the code. Here we're defining some functions that will be the pattern that we'll use and we will declare the dependencies as a function that returns Okay, 10 minutes for a break. Um, the dependencies for the function here, and we are gonna start all of them. In this case, this start, I'm gonna remove the terminal and use the other one, so this is bigger. Uh, like this. Okay, this, we are gonna leverage test containers modules, which is pre-configured um, instances of your te the technology that, you, that you're interested, in this case, Postgres. And with this one liner, which is this one, you can have a Postgres. But it comes with some sugar, which is functional options to create this Postgres with different configuration. For example, you can choose the Docker image for Postgres. In this case, we are gonna use Postgres 15, Alpine flavor. We're gonna add some scripts at the beginning. Uh, you know Postgres in Docker has a, a, there is a directory that if you put some SQL file or shell script file, it will be automatically executed. So with this, functional option within its scripts. Your file will be copied into the, in the container before it starts. So it's a, it's a way to preload your image. You can choose the name of the database and set the credentials. Also one, one for me is a killer feature from test containers, the weight strategies. Uh, you can decide to, to wait for your application or your dependency, your service, uh, in multiple manners. You can wait for a log entry to be there, a number of times, you can wait for a port to be available, you can wait for a, a, a command that executes in the container. So you can create fine granular um, conditions to wait for application. So in Docker Compose you have a health check, but here in this container you have multiple, and you can combine them. You can create a wait for all, and it's an array of strategies, and you can wait for, for all of them at the same time. You can define deadlines, one has to die before the others, etc. So it's very, very convenient. So in this case, Postgres will gonna wait for two. And this is something specific to Postgres because that log entry will appear two times whenever the, the, the database is empty and is loaded for first time. And at the end, remember the metadata struct, we are gonna overwrite the, um, the, the variable for the talks. Remember the metadata struct that contain, contain all the URLs. We are gonna uh, overwrite uh, that at the, at the beginning. Uh, the container comes with a connection string uh, method that returns the URL of the database. Why? When you start Postgres, it's run, it is running in the port 5432 by default, right? But test containers automatically creates a random port for you because you could run the Postgres instance in parallel in multiple tests and we don't want to collide. 
we don't, we don't want collisions when we are running tests in parallel. So test containers allow you to, well, allow you, automatically give you this for free, which is running the database in a, in a random port. And internally, this method, connection stream, is discovering the random port and providing you the URL with the, with the, um, the entire URL with the port, etc. And we set it in the tags uh, variable that we have for the struct. Um, okay, so we have this store to, uh, store talks store function that will initialize the dev SQL uh, file, and we are overriding the variable. Now we're going to run got mod tidy. We are going to stop the application here. Uh, go mod tidy. Um, and we're going to update the make file. Remember, there was a build tag that we need here to, to, to this code to be executed. So whenever we run the application, we want Postgres to be up uh, uh, next to us. So we're going to update the make file with this. Uh, here, sorry, make file. Which is appending the DAX dev to the execution. So whenever we run make, make dev, that code will be automatically appended to the, to the build. You can see here that we are running test containers. There are more logs than before. And we can see here that there is test containers cloud as container runtime. Um, it's using Ryuk. I will explain it later. We, we have a, a, a container which is killing containers when they are, not in, they are not needed. So, and we have here our Postgres Alpine, right? Running next to us. It waits for the conditions. And finally, we have the application. So, the application is fine. Sorry. Uh, the application is the, probably it's better if I follow like here. I think it's bigger if I follow from here. Do you see better if I follow the the steps from from here, right? Cool, thank. You. And I think it's faster than the ID. Uh, we were here updating the dev. We have the log, and if we check the containers, I'm gonna open a new a, a new tab in the terminal. Docker PS, it will give me two containers. So Postgres is running here. I, I told you about the random port 32769 uh, instead of the 5432. So your tooling, for example, you have to point to that port. If you have a, a SQL visual, uh, SQL viewer, you need to put uh, that port uh, to access the, the Postgres instance in this case. But of course, the a test containers could be used for ephemeral containers that need to be removed at the end of the test. So probably you don't need to connect to them. Or probably yes, because you need to troubleshoot, you need to debug a test. You put a breakpoint and you have the container running and you can enter. So that could be that could be it. So let's check now the application. We have this URL, remember? Oh, sorry. Uh, right. yeah, but I, I, I wanted to open in a new tab. Now the message is different. They say that URL scheme is failing. If we go back to the logs, we see that the error is 500. I don't know, uh, in, the, in the behind lines, do you can see? Yes, 500, and we have a different log here, which is Redis. Remember the code to access the database. It check it first Redis, and for Redis, uh, here in the, what is, uh, Repo. No, sorry. The handler, sorry. Yes, in the in the ratings, get ratings here. First, it checked that Redis was there. And so it's failing because this condition is not satisfied. There is getting a run error because Redis is not there. So let's gonna fix it. The same way, we're going to stop the application. We are going to um, update the imports in the dev file. Oh, let me let me do a commit uh, with
No, sorry, where is it? Tell me. Uh, git add test data. Git add make file, go mod, go soon. Okay, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna commit at Postgres to dev mode. I'm gonna push it upstream uh, dev fest minus u. So you have all the all the code right there. Um, and I'm gonna go to the dev application. I'm gonna update the imports. Yes, more imports there. I'm gonna start. Remember there was a function to start the, the Postgres database. Now we have, I'm gonna add it at the end. Rate in store exactly the same. We have a run container for Redis with the image. That's it, and it comes with the convenient method connection string to retrieve the connection string. I think we are done for the minutes. So do you want a break? Five minutes? It's okay if we continue? Cool. Um, yes, we have the connection string, and at the end, same pattern. We are overriding the variable with the metadata here. Uh, we are gonna tell that the functions that are executed in the init are updated here in this array of functions. And yes, this is the result. And we are done. So if we start now make dev, oh sorry, go mod for the dependencies and make dev. Now we will see two containers, one for Postgres and one for Redis. If we go here and Docker PS, we can see the containers over there. So now we have this. So if we go again to this uh, URL, which is getting the, all the ratings for a talk, now I'm updating it. Oh, we have ratings, but it's empty. So let's check the log of the application. 200, but there is an error. Error calling lambda. Remember that for the lambda, if the, there was an error with the lambda, we didn't fail, but didn't append the, the statistics. So we have these ratings. So we're, we're gonna send a, a we're gonna send some ratings. Uh, we can track, we can use uh, this is the payload, so I'm gonna copy this, which is a cure command to run, which is hitting the rating same point with post method for the in test continuous integration testing. Remember that that talk did this exist in the SQL that we created. We loaded the Postgres with that and the, with a value five. Oh, it says message unable to dial port 9092 connection refuse. <coughs> what happens here? Let's check the logs of the application. 500. What happens here? We have a Redis. Sorry? Kafka is not there. Yes, we remember that we were sending the message to Kafka. Okay, let's let's fix it again. Let's stop it and let's add the Kafka. In this case, we are using Red Panda, but if you do in, in test containers, we have the concept of modules. Uh, if depending on the, this is for Go. Uh, there are a lot of them. Uh, we have a Kafka one, but it's not using Zookeeper. So it's in craft mode. So I decided to use with Red Panda because at that time I was writing the, the workshop. We didn't have that module, but now we have it. These modules are sometimes, are many times contributed by the vendors. For example, the K6 module is contributed by the Grafana folks. So these are really, really cool. Uh, there are official modules that are contributed by the teams directly, and we have a certification partnership with them. So these modules, Microsoft, Local Stack, Red Panda, Wiremock, 
our official module. So the team has to respond if there are some issues. Uh, the team, I mean, the, the team must help, help us with, with some issues. Um, yes, so we were going to fix the red panda, the, the queue. I'm going to update the imports for, you know, that we have this the module, the red panda module. Uh, we are going to add the function at the end. I'm going to I'm gonna uh, first. I'm gonna commit this uh, mod zoom and the, so you can you can have it uh, add Redis to dev mode. I'm gonna push it so you can use it. Um, Copy the module, the import here. Sorry for changing. <laughs> the imports, the function for Red Panda. As you can see, the pattern is the same. We have a function that returns a container or an error. Uh, and this is the uh, Red Panda module. Almost one liner. You choose the image, and we are say we are saying Ted Panda to auto create the topics for us. Hmm? It comes with a method which is Kafka Seed Broker, and this is the URL where the Kafka is listening or the Red Panda is listening. So we put that into our metadata stroke. Uh, let's update the functions. Yes, and we are done. We are done. We are done. So let's go run go mod tidy again to download the Red Panda module and make dev. We we must see all the containers. I'm gonna Docker PS. We have Postgres ready and Red Panda. You can see it here. Red Panda. We go again to the module, to the application. It's serving in the port 8080. Now we have all the dependencies running at the same time. So we're gonna again try the post from Cur. It should respond with, hey, we have a JSON here. So if we go back to the application and see, we should see a five, there is one rating but again, we don't have a connection with AWS. We don't have the Lambda. Let's work on that. On that. OK. Let's add local stack. Who knows about local stack? Cool. Local stack is a, is a AWS on one container. So it, you can run the entire AWS or the majority of the services from AWS in one container. Um, local stack. Yes, it's here. And it allows you to, well, simulate all the APIs from AWS in one container, lambdas, S3, uh, databases, DynamoDB, et cetera. So you can, I think it's very, very convenient for testing. Uh, but we are going to use it in our dev mode because we are interested in, in well, have this application working locally. OK, let's going to create the Lambda function first. We are going to go to the file system. I'm going to create Lambda Go directory in the uh, root of the project. This could be another directory. Let's imagine that this is a monorepo. Uh, we have two teams working in the Lambda Go and in the application. So we have here the main file. Uh, very simple. This is using the AWS uh, SDKs for Lambda, and it's waiting for this payload, and it will return this response. Very simple. At the end, it receives the payload using the APIs from AWS. They are really smart. We don't have to test that. And 
we iterate through the ratings and do our calculations. Uh, getting the, the average count here, we are really smart and we are calculating the average well or not. Probably we can introduce a bug here. And we can create a module here for go mod here for the lambda. So let's go to the lambda di directory. Go mod tidy to download the lambdas. Oh, sorry, Eva, I need to switch. OK. So we have the lambda. Let me, um, because we already have the, um, I'm going to commit the, the, um, the, the red panda thing. Uh, uh, git saying. OK. Now we have the red panda thing in the, in the repo. So we have this. We have the, the application with its own Go mode. So it's a separate module, a separate, a separate module of Go. We're going to have make. How, this is an open question. What build tool are you using to build your applications? We are using make. But you know, in Go, there are not things like Maven or Gradle or NPM to create life cycle of the application. What are you using to, for that? This is a random question. It's not related to the workshop. I'm, in, I'm interested in learning from what you do. What do you usually do? Make, task, make file, make files. Basel is also an alternative. OK, uh, we are using task internally, task task file. This, I think, is more convenient than make, right? Yeah, that's And, and it's go but in the, under the hood. Yeah, it's all written and nice syntax, nice output in the controller. Hmm. So for simplicity, we're going to follow with uh, here. And this make file uh, comes with three targets. We're going to run mod tidy. We're going to build the Lambda. I'm going to be a smart here. I'm going to force AMD64. I will explain you later, because I found this uh, during the, while testing this in the past. Um, and we're going to zip the output. Why? Because in local stack, it needs a zip file containing the Lambda. This Lambda must be named Bootstrap. This is a, it's convenient. It's, a, it's uh, opinionated to local stack. So whenever we find this function dot zip in the in in some certain directory inside local stack, it will convert that into lambda. We will see out now uh, how how it's done. So we we are gonna build the lambda for Linux or MD64, and we're gonna zip it to upload it to uh, local stack. Okay, and finally to integrate this with. Uh, our application, because we are the web app, app team, we're going to update the make file. And every time we run build dev, we're going to build the Lambda, right? Here in line four, we're going to build the Lambda for us, because we want an artifact that is already distributed. This could be other in, 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 in production or working pro in, in your company would be different. You probably receive the artifact from Artifactory or for a Git tag, I, I don't know. For, for GitHub, but this is to simulate that. So uh, the team is also releasing the Lambda uh, for us every time. Um, yes, yes, yes. So let's gonna start adding local stack. The same pattern. We are gonna uh, go to the dev dependencies. We are gonna update the imports. We are gonna add this at the end. And uh, we are gonna. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go through through the red the local stack code at the moment. And here the functions. We're gonna update the functions. 
So when we start, we start the talks database, the rating, the streaming queue, and the ratings lambda. Uh, let's, let's go here. Well, first, we're going to build the lambda in code. Remember the make file? We're going to call this make file from Go because we don't want to go outside. We are gonna write, we're going to write tests, but we don't want to go to a separate terminal. We don't want to switch context. We are going to build the Lambda here for us. So whenever we are starting the, red, the local stack container, we are going to say, this is the image of local stack that we want to use. Are we going to customize the internals of the module? Remember that modules are abstracting away the technology. So with, it comes with some uh, functional options to uh, modify. In this case, there is a, a generic uh, customizer, which is customize request, which affects everything. And you are able to do some in, modify the internals of the container definition uh, in your own manner. So for, for us, we're going to modify the services as an environment variables. This is a local stack API. So if you pass the services and a comma separated list of services from AWS, it will start those services for you in local stack. And we're going to say that the labels that we want to use for the lambdas, the Docker labels, you know Docker containers has labels, uh, we are going to use the test container labels. Why? Because remember that we have a, a container that was killing the containers at the end of the execution. So because we don't want to leak some con the lambda containers in the, our machine, we are labeling them with the test containers labels to say, also remove the lambdas. Yes, so it's a way to, to do that. Are we are going to copy the function zip. Remember the function zip file that I mentioned? Yes, we are going to copy everything that goes into this array of files will be copied to the container before it's started. So Docker will create a container. We will copy. We have access to the layers, to the file system. We will copy the files there, and we will start it. This is convenient to load things into, to change the, 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 the initial state of a container. And this is kind of uh, scaffolding to bootstrap the Lambda. Uh, are you familiar with lambdas? How do, uh, for me, preparing the workshop was the first time I interacted with them. But we need to, in local stack, we have to first create the lambda function. We are going to put a name, which is stack, local stack lambda URL example. We are going to create the function URL because we need, once we create the lambda, we need to create the URL. Then we are going to wait for it because it could take a, a, a few seconds. So we're going to actively pull in. The, the, this is internal. We will, that will happen in the container as a startup. So we are, we are, gonna, we are gonna, not going to see it. And we are going to execute those, com those commands inside the container. This is the container, the, the, the local stack container. And finally, once the, everything happens, we are waiting for the Lambda to be created and the URL to be available. We query the Lambdas. We list the Lambdas and get the URL for us. Because remember, we have a metadata stroke. And we need the URL of the Lambda, so our client is able to, to communicate to the Lambda using HTTP. So we are going to execute it. Execute is a method on all the containers provided by test containers. And it's multiplexing the response because we need uh, Docker is appending some protocol bytes at the beginning of the command. So if you need to, to interact with the response, we are able to, to do that. So in this reader, we are going to get the response. And this response is this struct, it's a JSON. So in this JSON, we are going to get the function URL. At the end, what is important for us is this. Create the Lambda. Everything is glue code to put the Lambda into the, into the local stack and get the Lambda. So we are going to replace the 4566 port for the random port, which is the one that test containers give you, which is the random port. Right? Uh, the explanation of what we have done. At the end, replacing the connection struct. So we added the functions, and this is the entire file. So we are going to run go mod tidy again. Oh, sorry. Local stack is there. We are going to stop, make dev. It's building the Lambda and zipping it. And we are going to start the containers. We can talk about this Rio container later. Uh, remember this resource reaper that I mentioned that is killing the containers for you at the end of the execution. You can talk about it later, but if you're, in, you're interested. But it's our, our companion con container that is, has a record of everything that test containers created, network, images, and containers. 
and at the end of or and volumes, and at the end of the execution, when there are no connections to Rio is listening, it will kill whatever it has in the in the list. Are you anime fans? Anime? Death Note? Well, it's an anime. Ryuk is the main character, and we kill it because at the end, in the anime, uh, somebody typed a name or wrote a name in the in the book, and that person will die. So, and the death of, is this the god of death, I think. Yeah, and yes, he will kill it. Uh, Git names. Cool. We have the application. We have all the containers here. We can see local stack. If we type Docker ps. We can see all the containers. Local stack, Red Panda, MySQL, Supercell, Postgres, and Redis. Um, yes, 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 yes. We are happy with it. So we can now curl the main endpoint. Oh, sorry. And we see the. Oh, sorry. What happened? Probably the displayed. Stop presenting. Let me stop and share again. This is the countdown for destruction. Yeah. Yeah, it says sharing. Probably we need to touch something here. I Yes. Oh, I touched there, and I don't know what. I don't know German. Sorry. Anybody know German? Okay. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> yes. yes. Thank you. Your mic? Oh. Hello, hello, one, two, three, one, two, three. We'll find out in a little bit of time. So whenever you're ready, we can play. Are you happy with now or we can take a break, just drink water? I'm gonna drink water. I have a bottle here. Oh, oh okay. Oh. Thank you. If you want this, I don't. I don't. I don't have any. Is, if you want it, yeah. I don't have it. In, so, should we make five minutes? For me, it's fine. So, five minutes. Five minutes. Toilet. All the way straight down. On the left hand side, the coffee and on the first one, the drinking. And when you come back, every time you drink. Oh. <clears throat> okay, we are everybody again. Cool. So remember that we were the application running, we had the local stack with the lambda, but we didn't. Well, we created the local stack, but we haven't tested if the lambda is there, right? We created the lambda code that was re receiving the ratings, and we need to check if the ratings, the analytics from the ratings are there. So uh, we are gonna hit. Remember, we are we were hitting this endpoint, which is the root, to check the metadata. Uh, and we can see here uh, that we have a URL for the Lambda, right? This Lambda is specific to this execution. Uh, next execution will be different because the URL will be changed. So we're gonna, in, in the code, in the, in the workshop, say, okay, get the, this post request. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy the URL, I'm gonna curl. This is the URL I'm interested in. And I'm gonna, with the post, in the, in the code set, 
copy the, the lambda URL and send and pass the payload. So to this lambda, I'm gonna pass this random values of data with this uh, content type, and it should respond with a lambda. Yes? Average 3.8, and because our math is very good, we, uh, we know that this is correct, right? So the lambda is there. Uh, let's do something else. Uh, I'm gonna watch, sorry. <clears throat> Look, this is the container from the lambda, right? This is using the AWS Lambda container image for Go. Inside the container is our binary for the Lambda, and it's responding to our request. So we are able to emulate, or actually not, it's not a real emulation. We are testing the code from the other team. Cool. We are able to interact with it. So now we have a dev mode. We can start testing the application. We have every, all the functionality. We can test it. But we want to demonstrate that it works as expected. How? Manually testing it? Well, no. We are engineers. We have to write tests for it. We have them want to demonstrate because we want our team to be happy just when a newcomer comes. We want to have tests on the CI that are reproducible. And because everything is in code, which is what I like from test containers approach, you have everything. It's like infrastructure as code. You have all your dependencies in code. And you can, you are, they are version alongside you are evolving your application. So we're going to start adding test. So we go to the repository test. Uh, I'm going to close everything here. Uh, repository test from the ratings store. I'm going to create repo test.go. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to see. So this test is using Testify as the party library. We could use directly uh, uh, if error equals and return the testing test fatal like here, or we can use Testify. This is a matter of preference. But by the way, who using Testify? Testify or another testing library? Yes? Or using if error equals or just checking the values and using the testing library the plain testing library. OK, yes, it's, it's a matter of preference. I, I ask because one thing that I've seen in the community, in the Go community more and more, is trying to avoid libraries, try to avoid dependencies. And, and it's fine, but sometimes we need to balance what is the benefit of using. Probably in Testify is just one liner to see this, require no error, instead of if error equals something like that. But well, it's a matter of, of preference. Uh, so this test is very simple. We are going to test the repository. Remember the repository for the Redis container had uh, one method for adding ratings and retrieving all the ratings for, for a given talk or a given key. So we're going to start the Redis one-liner, the same version. The tests are going to use the same version that we are using in dev mode, which hopefully will be the same version that is running in production. And at the end, we're going to clean up. This is not needed, actually, because we have this resource reaper that I mentioned, Ryuk, but it's convenient to, to remove it if you, you, are, you want to explicitly terminate. This is from the API from test containers. So remember, we have the connection string. The repository needed a connection string to um, create the repository, to create the client, the, in this case, the Postgres client, the Redis client, sorry. And we're going to run some tests. One is adding a rating and checking that, the, that it doesn't fail, it doesn't return an error, and also that the result is one. And also adding multiple ratings and calculating that the, the distribution of the ratings. We are going to add 100 ratings to Redis, uh, a distribution of five, so 20, to, 20 with one, 20 with two, 22 with three value. At the end, we are going to check the distribution that everything uh, worked perfectly. So we are going to start the test. 
Uh, here, well, you know the the convenient the, the conven name convention for the test files. We are gonna run Gomo tidy for. We're gonna stop the containers because we now we are not in dev mode anymore. We are in dev in test mode. Uh, Gomo tidy. Let me let me push for you the changes. Make file go. Uh, internal uh, app lambda go. Cool. We have the 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 branch push. So now we are going to run the test. We have created this. This is what what IDEs are you using? I'm using Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code, other ones, IntelliJ Intelli with Golan, Vim, nobody, Vim. No, there are, there are a lot of people using Vim with plugins, and they are very productive with, in Go. Um, I ask because, for example, if you want to run the test here, well, it will work. In the next step, we'll see. Uh, you ha remember that we are talking about the build tags, right? At the moment we run a test, which is in a file protected by a build tag, that, will, that the IDE won't recognize that. So we need to instrument the, the IDE to do that. In Visual Studio Code, you can do it. It's a settings that you add this build tag to every test execution. It's just a matter of reference. So I'm going to run the test uh, from the command line, but it could be on the IDE adding this, this build tag. So this should run the test. Uh, remember that we are running in the cloud, but in four, in five seconds, and probably because we needed to connect to the uh, cloud for first time, let's execute it again, and probably will be even faster. Well, four five seconds, five seconds, five seconds this time. Well, in five seconds we have real tests, and for me this is important because we are testing with real dependencies. We are not mocking. In the past. Well, historically, when the tooling was not that uh, powerful like nowadays, like with Docker, we relied on mocks. And this is not convenient because we want to, for example, in databases, we don't want to test with um, SQL database, right? Uh, my, uh, H2 database, which is it complains with SQL standard, but sometimes it's different from production, from, pro, from progress or MySQL. So we want to test with the same version and in production, probably with the same configuration. The Postgres module, if you, are, you, are, you said that you are using Postgres, right? The Postgres module for Go um, comes with some APIs, for example, to uh, what is this? You need the scripts. Uh, there is, you can pass the configuration file for Postgres. So you need to con configure something specific to the encoding. I always use the encoding because my surname has a Spanish ñ, and it's always printed wrong in the tickets in a plane. So if you need to change the encoding, pues you can use it and, and pass the encoding uh, to the database. Um, here, the connection, database configuration here, you have a with config file. Sorry, uh, with config file. So you can pass the config file to the, the Postgres database and it will come with whatever you need or whatever is configured in production. So we have the test running. We see that the Postgres, the, the Postgres, sorry, the Redis, this is for Redis, I was confused, sorry. The Redis works and we are gonna uh, add the test for the streaming, the, the streaming queue now. So we are gonna go for Streaming, we are gonna add broker test dot go. Uh, we are gonna see the test. The test is exactly the same. We have a run container for Red Panda, the same configuration like we have we had for the dev mode. Probably we can be smarter and try to uh, re re refactor the code and use this in one place, but for educational purposes, is spread across the test and the dev mode. We are not separating concerns. 
So this we're gonna send. Remember that the 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 code for sending messages to the queue had a, a, a callback. Remember that sent to Redis, and intentionally we didn't we we coupled with that uh, execution. We waited for the the message to be produced and sent to Redis. Why? Because we wanted to to showcase here that we can identify if an error we, we test the different error modes. For example, we want to pass a callback here that returns nil error, so it doesn't fail. So we're gonna send a rating which will start a, a, a the, the queue will produce a message and the callback will return nil. So our code will be aware that this callback worked. But here we're gonna produce an error intentionally and we're gonna send the rating and the callback will be the error function. So we will check that the message queue is, send, is producing the message but also failing. So we are aware of that. This is intentional because probably we need to file and forget and we don't care about the message, the, what, what happened in the message queue. So we are gonna run this test. Again, we are gonna run the mod tidy. We are gonna run the test. Perfect, in three seconds we are able to check that our streaming queue is working. Uh, well, with the, application, the integration of our streaming queue, the application with the streaming queue works. For me it's important to separate concerns when we are writing integration tests. When I explained in the, at the beginning that Docker Compose is fantastic, but you have an all or nothing uh, configuration because you spin, you Docker Compose up, you spin up everything. With the containers, you can, you are smart because you test whatever you, what, what you need in your test code, right? Um, I have seen many, in my career, many, many, many teams writing tests, but not architecting the test or designing the test. Let's be smart because if you want to run things in parallel or, or, or speed up the build, uh, well, if we are able to, to separate concerns and this is an integration test, okay, they spin up every, just, just what I need. In this case, the database, the Redis or the, the, the streaming queue. But what I have seen in the past is, no, no, the test run everything, run the test and then finish and kill everything. But at the end of the day, that is, doesn't, doesn't scale because probably the CI needs more powerful machines uh, you need computers with more RAM, CPU, etc., because you have to spin up everything. And when you work on that for first time, you don't know how to. Okay, just run everything. You, I, I've been a bill engineer working in Jenkins on GitHub. So whenever you have to work with a team and saying, okay, the bill is taking too long. Let's try to improve it. Let's to refine it. We're gonna separate concerns in the test. I don't know. They ask us how to run all the tests. So it's important. Oh, at the end, I, I saw many teams writing code to separate to separate concerns, like maintaining code that goes to Docker Compose and select which are the services that we need for each test with environment variables. You set one environment variable with the service name that you want to start. So you pass that. So at the end of the day, you have to maintain code to operate Docker Compose. So if you use Docker Compose, which is great, Docker Compose app, and that's fine. Not write code around it. With test containers, you have this ability to separate concerns and say, no, I'm a smart, I want to run this test for this set of test suites, right? Um, yes, okay, we added the test for the, the streaming queue, now we're gonna add the test for the, uh, the talks. Repo test.go, and we're gonna run the test, exactly the same, you know, this is the Postgres, we are gonna check the connection string, we are gonna instantiate a repository once, we, and run multiple tests against the same repository. We don't want to create multiple containers, for example, it could be the case, it depends, at the end it depends. You, can, you could have multiple containers running at the same time, but it depends on the, your testing strategy, you could have only one and run the test, making sure that all tests destroy the state that it creates. This is important. Or you can just delegate to the, your test suite and say, spin up one, whatever number of containers you need. Every, every, every container will have its own data and there will be collisions between them. Um, the assertions, well, we are gonna create a talk, which is in this case, the UID and the title. We are gonna uh, create it. 
we have checked that the ID is three. Why three? This is flaky, but well, for demonstration is it's interesting. But this is flaky because we know that in the in the SQL script there were two. Ideally, the, we should create a, a select statement saying, "Give me the number, and I will increment it." So more resilience. But this is just to let you know. Um, we get the the uh, the, rep the from the repo we get it by UUID and we check that there are no errors that everything is received and the the whatever we created we can retrieve it so we are test we are testing here the creation and the re and re retrieval we're gonna check the exist UUID and we we can check that it doesn't exist by UUID again we're gonna run it. And this is for the talks. We see the Postgres system running. And in three seconds, we have our test against a real database. Uh, cool. Any question? No? Um, the same for the lambdas. Internal, remember that we have a client to talk to the uh, lambda client. Lambda client test dot go. This Lambda client is building the Lambda because why? Because we need it in the um, in the local stack to upload it. Remember that I explained it, that we could be smart and move code around and refactor in having it in one single place. Here in the test, we are just doing exactly the same. We are getting the local container the local stack container, we are zipping the Lambda and uploading to local stack, all the commands to create the Lambda, getting the URL, and at the end, the test is this one. We the predefine, an, sorry, we predefine a histogram. Well, we create, we get the URL from, from the Lambda, we instantiate our client, Lambda client, we get the histogram, we get the stats from the client, and we check that the value is this one. Very simple. Our mathematics are working. So we are going to run the test from here. This is an integration test for uh, our application, how it integrates with the Lambda team. Local stack taste just a little bit to, to, to start, but at the end it will be there. But this is convenient. I think it's convenient because you don't have to interact with AWS. The bill, the cloud bill also is reduced, so it's important also. So here we have, in 22 seconds, we have the Lambda build, we have the local stack uh, deployed, we have the Lambda into the local stack, we have the, the request and there is a container that is responding uh, to those requests uh, inside local stack. Local stack at the end has access to the Docker socket and is able to create containers uh, on the fly. Yes, we have the execution. Okay, uh, now let's add test for the APIs. You know that this is the in, in Go the net the standard library is well the preferred way to do that. We have the net dot, uh, slash HTTP test uh, package from the standard library that allows you to create this test for endpoints. So we are going to add tests for the router. I will copy and I will explain them, them later. Router test dot go. No, well, I will, I will move it because I committed a mistake. It's uh, here. Up. Sorry. Yes, I, I don't know if you, you notice, but I'm using this approach. Uh, the package name uh, underscore test, you know why? Yes, have you seen that before? Yes, I like it because it forced you to test your code like a consumer. So the, the APIs that you're exposing in your production code, you are testing them like your users will, 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 will use it. So that's what I like. You don't have access to everything. If you, if you remove the, the package, the, the, the dash test, the underscore test, you will have access to all the private methods. 
uh, and could be well, it could be it. But here you force yourself to test the public APIs, depending on what you need. At the end, it's depending on what you need. Um, yes. So this is very not very smart because we're gonna add test. I don't know if you can read it from behind, but tests that are checking the dependencies are not dead. Why? Because remember, where the dependencies were not there, we received a 500 error, right? So our, if we hit any of these endpoints, they get ratings and get, or, or sending a post request, it will return an error. So these, these tests are not very smart, but they are unit tests. They are testing the failure mode. So using HTTP recorder, we are fine. At the beginning, we are setting up the router, which is let me let me show you in the code. The router has a setup router, which is basically wiring the, the, the HTTP endpoints with the handlers functions uh, for root ratings and add rating. And at the end, well, using HTTP requests to 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 get it and serving the response here. Um, so we're gonna run it. <clears throat> uh, wait, 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 wait. I copied something wrong. Oh, there is some, sorry. Oh, yes, I didn't say this, sorry. <clears throat> yes, they fail on purpose. The, I mean, the, the HTTP endpoint failed, but the test passed. Hmm? But this is not useful because we want the test, we have to want, we want end to end tests. Now we have moved in the pyramid just a little bit above. In the past, the previous examples were writing, we were writing integration tests. Now we want to test the HTTP endpoints and because of the, the purpose of the design of the application, all the endpoints depend on all the dependencies. When you depend on everything, it's an, for me it's an end-to-end -end test. End-to-end -end test, depending on the company you work for, is kindly connected to user interfaces, like Selenium, Playwright, Cypress, etc. But for me, an end to end test, it could be it. Well, at the end, if you have the, the UI, probably you, need, you have everything wired. Uh, but here, because we are talking about HTTP endpoints, we, have, we need everything. So for me, it's an end to end test also. So uh, we have the handlers, uh, remember the HTTP test, and remember that we created this local dev mode in the past to start up dependencies for us, uh, protecting it with a, with a build tag. But we want to to use them in for end to end we are going to we are going to um, reuse that you can use conditions or conditionals in the let me commit this first sorry uh, router repo test lambda client rocker test and repo test but integration test to Service to, to layers and give me git push. Um, so yes, we're gonna, uh, let me close everything here and open the dependencies. Remember that we have the build tag here. We're gonna replace this. What does it mean? You can use conditionals. And it will say that this file will be appended when the dev build tag or the end-to-end -end build tag is added to the tool chain. I, know. I have opinions around, the, around this because at the end you, you are adding logic here that could be difficult. But if, you, if this is simple like this or integration or, end, sorry, or dev mode or end-to-end, -end, for me it's fine. But if you start your, seeing yourself adding logic here, it's kind of an smell. Okay, so these init methods, starting the dependencies, will be added to the application only on dev mode or end-to-end. -end. 
So we're gonna add a, a make target in the make file. We're gonna add where is this? No, what I did? I don't know what I did. Sorry. Oh yes. Um, make file here. This make file now, apart from the other, uh, let me oh, close this. Apart on, of the already existing targets, now we are adding test integration, which is the regular test, run all the integration tests, and the end to end test. We will use the tag for end to end. So when we run the end to end test in this application, it will wire all the dependencies for us. Uh, so we are gonna replace everything what we did in the router test file with this code. I'm gonna show you now. So we are gonna do the same. We, we have all the dependencies. So now we are gonna spec from the ratings endpoint. It was a get request expecting all the ratings for a talk that we receive a 200, okay, now, because the, the dependencies are there, so we request the ratings, it will be there. They, they will be there. When we post a rating, we expect that it returns at 200 OK, which is our expectation. Cool. So we are going to, now we created a make end to end text, make, uh, sorry, make test end to end, sorry. You see that the build tag is added. Is added, oh, what is this? Oh, yeah, 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 I forgot, I forgot one step, sorry. <coughs> yes, here. I forgot to, to copy the test data. Remember the test data was in the root directory. Uh, when we are running, the end-to-end -end test lives here in the app. Well, is, they are not there because this is the, the code here. In the, in the app, because the death dependencies are there. Uh, we want, in this workshop, we are creating two different scenarios. Where we are running in dev mode, we probably we want a set of data. But for integration tests or the end-to-end -end tests, we want another data. data. So we are going to copy the content of the uh, test data file, directory, sorry, into the internal app. Why? Because probably we want to create different tags at when we are testing. The, da the data set that we want to, to use in, in test mode could be, could be different. So now, because we have the file, look at the error. It was really clear. The, the, mod the Postgres module failed because the, the, the file was not there. Now Postgres has started, ready. Local stack. Local stack is taking more because we, are, we already know that it's building the Lambda every time. We could improve this code, of course. We can always download the C file or from the, from the team that is working in the Lambda, but just for, for the workshop, we are building it again and again. And we have the test and the test pass. So we are receiving 200 OKs for all the endpoints. Well, not all. Only the, the, the two that are interesting, the post request adding ratings and the get request receiving the ratings for a, for a, for a given talk. But we are from here, perfect. We're gonna add a new test, but for the, the, the metadata. We're gonna update the, the, the imports. And we're gonna add this test. I'm going to show you now. In this test, we are going to check that the endpoint, the root endpoint, remember that it retrieved the metadata with the URLs that uh, the application used, database, lambda, etc. We are going to check that the response of that URL is returning this connection uh, metadata struct. <coughs> So we're going to check using a regular expression that this is a Redis URL, this is a Kafka URL, this is a Postgres URL, 
And finally, we have the Lambda URL from local stack, right? It's a, it's a regular expression. So we added this helper function to do that. And at the end, when we run make test again, I save it, I save it the file, yes. <clears throat> It will run the dependencies again. And because, or thanks to test containers, with tests, every test execution, the containers will be destroyed after the test execution. So we are not leaking resources in our machine or even the CI if we don't have a ephemeral. Uh, 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 I see that the, it's not working. Um, if we are using a CI that the workers are not destroyed, for example, at the, they are not ephemeral, probably we need this kind of things. Um, I'm fine with the battery. Eh? Don't, don't, don't be in a rush. So I have enough, but I saw that it's not working. That that plug. Okay. So we have integration tests for this, all the services, all the layers. We have end-to-end -end tests for the HTTP endpoints. I think our job is done. But we can even improve the life of our team with the Lambda team which is writing integration tests for the Lambda team. Okay, let's add integration tests for them because probably they can commit a mistake or introduce a bug in the Lambda and we are not aware of that. So we are gonna add this main test to Lambda directory. Let me push everything again. So for you, uh, dev dependencies, router. Uh, add end to end test for the app. Git push. Do you have it? Oh, uh, yes, there is a branch here, Dev Berlin, with, with it. I, I will use this, this branch, which we, we can see the result here. Um, so, yes, we have this. I added the main test file, not yet, in the Lambda directory. Yes, main test.go. We have the Lambda code here. Again, we are building the Lambda. We are going to test the deployment of the Lambda. Again, the same code we have three times now. Probably it's time to refactor this code and extract the information, or the, the creation of the Lambda to some helper um, packets. But the thing is, because of we added build tags, uh, or we are, because we added build tags, we have to be smart here. Why I say this? When you are writing code that needs to be packaged into the binary, final binary, you don't want the test container dependencies to be packaged into your final binary. Right? If we put test containers code in an init method, remember the dev dependencies is not a test file. So eventually could be into the final uh, binary. And you don't want that because, well, you don't want to pollute the production environment with extra code. Um, you will have to be smart in how to you connect everything with the build tags. Right? Probably this helper function that creates the lambda has be pro to be protected with the same build tags uh, to avoid. Uh, the, the, to end up with a binary with the test containers or any test independency uh, into the production environment, in the production uh, artifact, sorry. So yes, we have this, again, with this setup of the uh, local stack, and now the test from here. We are defining a histogram. Uh, we are sending the payload directly with HTTP client because we are the, uh, oh, sorry, we are not, we, this is for the, the Lambda team. We are not using our code for interacting with the Lambda. This is HTTP calls to the Lambda. Uh, HTTP client, we are posting, we are sending the post request to the Lambda and we're expecting this value, which is the same test that we had, but for the Lambda. And this is, uh, oh no, sorry, here down. We are gonna add to the mod file, to the make file from the Lambda also the targets. I'm gonna explain this later. Why? Well, I, I will explain. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm explicitly saying the AMD 
architecture for the build because I, this is an M1. So it's a, a ARM. And because I'm using the cloud, the cloud is using Linux machines, AMDs. So everything is deployed to the cloud. This FIP file that I'm building locally is sent through SSH in a private tunnel to the cloud that is provi provisioned for you. And because it's running there, I, this is something I discovered the other day. Uh, the ARM binary that is produced in my machine won't work there. So, and I said, why, why is failing? The Lambda is there, the container is starting, but it dies without knowing why. So I have to enter the container, and I saw that the for, file format was ARM. So that's why I'm explicitly saying AMD64 here. And I'm having the, te the, this is the, yes, 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 this is, oh, for running the test of the, of the Lambda. So I'm going to go to the CD Lambda directory, and I'm gonna mod tidy and run the test. Mod tidy because I add independencies for local start. Remember, there's a separate project. And it's gonna run the test. We could mock that, of course. We could create a mock responding for our Lambda, but at the end we have to maintain the mock. This is very simple. So keeping this mock up to date is very simple. But when you are working in a big company with a lot of big things which could be distributed around the world, maintaining mocks is hard. Yes, and at the moment it evolves, it's hard to maintain the mocks. Uh, so this is the more the closer to what would be in production. So I think these 22 seconds pays off, right? Because you are interacting with the real Lambda. Okay, let's, well, a test that, that you never see failing is not, you don't have to trust in that, right? So let's make the test fail. This test, let's go into the production code and because we are new in the code base and we are not aware of that, we think that the average is calculated like this, right? It's very simple. We are introducing a really, really simple bug, but because we are not mathematics, we don't know. Yes. Who cares about mathematics? And we are gonna run our test, or we send the pull request, and our CI executes make tests, <clears throat> because we don't, run, we don't like running tests locally, so we will trust the CI. The CI is always the right state. I have seen many times that. Developers don't test, because it's hard to, to, to run the test locally, they trust the CI. So they push, they, 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 this inner loop is produced at the CI. And it's, I think it's uh, dragging the experience of, well, the, the entire developer experience of the, of the project. Because you, you iterate in the CI, and if the build takes one hour, two hours, I have seen that, it's, you, you suffer. So we see the test failing, which is great. It says the expected average, 3.333, and the average says, no, you 147,000. Wow, yes, because we changed it here. So now we can debug it, probably we can debug it, and put a breakpoint here, and and check that what happened. So we restore it back. The test again pass. And yes, we 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 are we are good. I don't know what 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 what's, how much time we have for what was the what time is the finish? One thing. So we we have thirty minutes more. I'm not finished. I have one one thing more. Um, and when I will have time to talk about it, how your experience, your feedback, I appreciate your feedback a lot. So whatever you consider you like it or you don't, didn't like it, please tell me because I'm here. This is the first time I, did, I do this workshop in public. So for me, it's a, a great opportunity to interact with, with you all. Um, I'm gonna talk about test container desktop. Remember that at the beginning, I, I recommended using test container desktop. Uh, why? Imagine that you want to interact with this container, the local stack container, or the Postgres database, because you, you, you see a real critical bug that you don't know what to do, so you start debugging the application. You put a breakpoint, it stops in one place, it says the data is corrupted, uh, but your tooling to use the Postgres database 
is not is not working. Why? We're using test containers. I mean, because remember, it was an, in a, it was running in a in a random port of your operative system because you don't want collisions. Uh, let's run the application again. Make dev. Oh, sorry, it was in the run directory. So, and let's here watch the containers. Redis is not running in the 6379, it's running in 3281, uh, 32, uh, So the, the well-known ports are not there anymore for us because intentionally we wanted uh, random ports. How can we debug that? Because our tooling, our the tools that we like to work, oh, let me push this, sorry. Well, I will, I will push it later. Um, yes. Uh, the tools that we are used to work with, uh, SQL developer, I remember back in the days working with Oracle databases, SQL developer, uh, Microsoft SQL Server Studio, something like that. Or here we have uh, also extensions uh, in, the, in, in Visual Studio Code. Whatever tool that you, you want to use, you want to use it, still use it, and interact with the dependency, the database. So. If, if I'm creating here, uh, let's, let's check the database. This is a Postgre database, I remember, oh, the port. You don't know the port, right? I have to go there, here with this Postgres, Postgres, I need to take the port, 32818. This is not convenient. This is not convenient at all, because you, every time the, the port will be different, right? Does container desktop help you? Yes, so it, we, we have the, the concept of services. So we provide with some configuration files. I don't know, you can read them from there. Yes, well, there are Tom files with Tomel file with example. Uh, this is some of them that are pre-configured. I'm gonna copy and remove the extension and keep it as Tomel. And at the moment, I change the extension of this Postgres file. I'm not, I'm not going to open now. Test containers will discover the service. Remember that it was empty and say Postgres 5432. And you can open a web terminal to the container. And you can also check the logs from the container, right? Automatically in the, in the web UI. Um, more, you can, at the moment they are there, I'm gonna open the file now. Uh, let me uh, open it here. There are a lot of comments, but the important thing is, okay, everything that is, every, every, every packet, every, every connection to the port 5432, redirect it or proxy it to the container that is provisioned by test containers, right? So also the images has to be uh, matching. So everything that is match, the matches Postgres and runs in that port, test container has to be able to proxy to that container. So now that this service is discovered here by the application, if I create the connection again, remember, what is this? Create connection. Oh, yeah. Postgres 5432. Uh, pass password Postgres. Database was ToxDB. And let, let, let's do one thing. I'm going to remove this first. It shouldn't work. Connection refuse. I'm gonna do it again. If I test it, this is a extension in the marketplace for Visual Studio Code. This is not in at all related to test containers. Connected. So now I'm able to discover and use my, my preferred tools to interact with the database. So I see the, the table, I see the, uh, the values in the database. So I think it's really, really convenient. Uh, I, now I can put a breakpoint and see what is the state of the database 
while I'm iterating in the in the test. We can do the same, but this is well part of the exercise. Probably, probably you were right. I, I'm talking too fast, and we had one 30 minutes uh, left. So I, I, this is what I have: uh, connecting to the database, connecting the Redis. So this is what it is from the the workshop standpoint. Um, uh, we have time for questions. We have time if you want to go for a walk or something. So I'm finished. Uh, I hope that you saw it interesting. I being that you can use it, or I hope that you can use it in your own projects. I know that, well, I'm on the Slack, uh, Gopher Slack also, so you you need to talk to me in the Gopher Slack. We also have a dedicated Slack uh, for test containers. There are specific channels for, sorry, for, for um, every language. So there is a test container Java, test containers Go, test containers .NET, et cetera. So you want to join there. We, the maintainers, are there so, uh, in the, in the in the Slack channel, so please join. Uh, we are very friendly. It's a it's an open source project. We are trying to be very healthy in the community. So well, I think that's all for me. Thank you. <laughs>